getting it done. Getting it done. Oh, Mac and the man bun. <laughs> That's right. I got the man bun back, guys. You ready to hit him with it? I'm ready to hit him with it, man. Let's let them know who brings them this show, just to let them know, because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these guys, man. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, you know, we're definitely brought to you by Made From Dirt Organics. If you guys haven't noticed, they got a perp box right here. And by the way, this is the sleep bomb. And speaking of perp, man, we got a little freestyle coming, and I think we need to put perp to rest. I think we might need to. Yeah. We were talking about that the other day. I think I think as much as we love purple, it might be holding us back. You yeah. know what I mean? It could be holding us back from our further potential. But anyways, guys, go check them out at madefromdirtorganics.com. Medicated salves infused with CBD and THC. They're honestly one of the best on the market. Go check them out in a the dispensary near you. We literally would not be here without them because I'm so fucking sore, or I was so fucking <laughs> sore from that double header this weekend. <laughs> yeah. For the first couple of days of the One week, rip. I really could not move, and that pain salve definitely came in handy. So shout out to uh, the people over at Made From Dirt. Rub it in. We're also brought to you by Pipe King. As most of you guys know, Pipe King, we've been fucking with them since the start. Um, head on over there right now and type in discount code PURPLECUSH to get 25% off your whole order. That's P-U-R-P-L-E. K-U-S-H, all lowercase, no spaces. Get those grapes. And with that being said, guys, we're going to kick this shit off with <coughs> a funky grape jam. So this is it. We're this putting the it. perp to bed right here. Yeah, we're putting it to bed, so bring out all your best grape lines. Here we go. Man, dude, Get ready for the all ride. All of a sudden, I'm feeling pressure, man. Whoa. GDP song. Smoking grapes all day long. Taking rips from the grape bomb. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. GDP about to steal the show. And it hurts my heart. I don't wanna let him go. No, no. I've been smoking CDP since I was three. Yeah, I love just all let me grapes. be. Smoking grapes. Cause I love how they taste. Yeah. I roll up a big old fucking blunt after a long ass day. I could sit and smoke purple for months Whoa, I really like GDP I be sitting in a tree smoking GDP When you see me, don't fuck with me, just let me be I be doing my thing, yeah, GDP, yeah I take a swing when I'm in the ring, yeah I give it my best shot, GDP Smoking GDP cause it's the best pot I like the purple, the darker the better, yeah and it don't matter the weather, I be getting GDP in my purple sweater. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. GDP, I don't wanna let it go. Graves by the A. And then we smoke the whole fucking pound. We smoke it down. We yeah. smoke it in gray. Big grapes, yeah, you know what's my thing. I be representing it's purple like the motherfucking king. Whoa. Oh, you know it's going down, I'ma blow another pound of the great, 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 great. If you're part of the great gang, then throw up the cheese, man. Great gang, great gang. I wanna smoke all of the flavors, roll the GDP blunts with the neighbors. Whoa, whoa, and I like them all, I like my great nuts we big and tall. Great gang. Whoa, I'll even eat some, uh, Whoa, but I said we do not get smoke. Bang. Whoa, and you gotta stay woke. Fuck the blue dream. It's all about we the purple the things. Great yeah, gang. yeah. I see the purple in my dreams. Yeah, but we that do purple not get bang. We do yeah. not. No, we do not. no, we don't. No, we don't. We don't smoke that great blue dream gang. pot. We wanna sing. Shout out to the motherfucking grape gang. Whoa, I love the purple, it's a great thing. Yeah, and I never wanna give it up. Yeah, I've been smoking purple since I got off my sippy cup. When I was three, smoking GDP. Yeah, in the crib. Yeah, even had a purple bib. Yeah, and you know it's going down, and I'm smoking on another fucking pound, never brown. Yeah, yeah. I don't even smoke green, everything is purple when I'm smoking blunts with the team. Whoa, 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 I don't really wanna let it go. Smoking GDP, even if it ain't medical. Yeah, granddad. 
daddy on the schedule. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't want to let you go. I'm feeling sad already. Smoke some beauty and then eat some spaghetti. Whoa, I gotta let you go. And the grapes are put to rest, guys. Rest in peace, guys. It was a, uh, it was a good run for the grapes. R.I.P. Granddad Perp, 1998 to fucking 2018. Yep, solid 20 year run. And the grapes are 2019. That's how high I am, guys. They're gone, but you know what? We're still gonna smoke them. We're still gonna rep them because we are the grape gang, grape squad. Throw the G's up. That's right. Speaking and, of 19, today is what June 6, 2019, right. Thursday. Happy Thursday to everybody out there listening. On this day in 1944, we got some, uh, got some this day in history for you guys. America and Allied forces invade <coughs> Normandy. Wow, look at that. D-Day. But uh, they knew we were coming, right? Or something like that. Yeah, we right? were going to get the Germans, right? <laughs> right. Hitler and stuff. Oh, they were ready to fight, though. I don't know. I don't know, man. I have no idea. That's all. I just read something like that. I, I didn't. Yeah. I was sleeping through history class, I guess. Me too. I know we did some type of project uh, on that subject, and uh, we lost it. And it's a very sad oh, story. Oh, I wish we still had that. It's gold. It was gold. We did a a, 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 a skit? really really nice of uh, the very first video project we ever did. Actually, it was a school project that was. Um, about the Holocaust and stuff. And we put a lot of time and effort into it. And it came out a little... <laughs> it came out... I'll tell you what. It came out good. Oh, but at the time... Boy. what We did that when we were 13. Yeah. At the time, a little inappropriate. A little inappropriate. Borderline. Borderline. Definitely. <laughs> a, a, some parts, definitely a little inappropriate. We, we won't go into reasons why. All right. It was the two of was... us and one of our other buddies in high school. And we played it in class. Um, yeah, it started like we put the editing into it. Like the three of us, like really went hard on this as far as like the thought. And like ninety percent of it was great, but there was a couple of parts that our twenty-eight year old selves would watch and go like, "Yikes! Holy shit! Yikes! Yikes!" And the yikes. teacher did the exact same thing. Oh my For the God. amount of work and effort and production value and research and facts that went into that, yeah, that was an A project. But because <laughs> of uh, some uh, young naive minds and some uh poor poor uh revision it was great acting though yeah great we acting. ended up getting a c minus every that. time me and you watched it we cried laughing and just about every other person we showed it to cried laughing so i think it served its purpose it was just uh it was kind of uh startling i yeah. guess is the word i would use it's probably good that that uh tape is lost in a landfill somewhere yeah probably but Anyways, that's the only thing we really found on this day in history is that, uh, you know, we invaded Normandy and... Uh, Anniversary of D-Day. They were pretty much waiting for us, from what I know, but I know not too much, guys. I don't know nothing. <laughs> One of our historians out there will let us know what yeah. the deal is in the comments. Yeah. Um, <coughs> oh. Shit, what else? What's been going on, man? We had a baseball game. Oh, dude. Actually, we had two. We had a doubleheader this weekend. And, and fuck am I sore. We crushed... Oh. Faith played the same team both games. First game we went twenty to zero. Yeah, I mean they they didn't have no pitching, and we have pretty deep a ton pitching. Of pitching, and that yeah. really really matters in in adult baseball because if you can pitch good, then it's like they they can't hit it. Yeah, we tore them up. Tore this them week, up, dude. We had like that was twenty to nothing after what five innings. The second game went seven innings. It was like nine to three. It was a more competitive game. I was beat. I was yeah, so hungry was tired. and tired. And then oh my god, yesterday I was so sore. Actually went and threw a bomb bullpen though. Yeah, it was pretty nice. It loosened me up. I'm not. I wasn't as sore today. Believe sometimes it, or not. it helps to get right back out there the next day, even when yeah. you're really sore. It makes like the next couple of days when you still would have been sore. Yeah. like sometimes you're not as sore. You exactly. Know? Yeah, it's funny how that works. It's because you work out like the acid and shit. I think, but yeah, all that lactic acid. Yep, and you just get the blood flowing into the muscles again, and the, you know, 
just gets them warmed up again and fires them up. Baseball's been fun this year, though, man. Yeah, yeah we're 3-0. and oh. I've been playing uh, on this team for four years. This is Dan's third year. This is by far the best team we've had so far. Yeah, for sure. I think we're pretty solid this year. we got great pitching. We're all hitting. There's all the, no easy outs. There's, there's, yeah. Usually in these leagues, no matter how good like the top end talent is, there's yeah. always a couple easy Steal, outs somewhere. Stealing bases is a fucking walk in the park. Um, I think I'm batting like 370 or something like that. It's like the best average I've had in a minute. Yeah, we've been crushing the fucking this weekend. What you were, you got what three, four hits. I was fucking three for four. Got bean like what two, three times. I don't know how I get bean so much. Your dude. OBP is fucking fire, dude. Yeah, dude, it's like seven fifty this year. My average is at like six right now, but it's yeah. crazy short sample size. But everybody on the team has been rigged yeah. this year. I mean, I only have like nine at bats, I we're, think. Or something. we're going up against a team this week though. That's fucking pretty good I'm the last deal. couple of years they've been a little bit better than us i'm thinking this year we're a little bit better than them i was bringing it yesterday we're both undefeated right now so. i want to say i was throwing at least 75 yesterday like that shit was smacking pretty pretty hard on the glove you know yeah my arm's feeling better this year than it has the last couple of years too i don't know yeah. what that is i don't know i just i've been i've been working on mine like strengthening it and like kind of repositioning my yours is looking as shoulder. good as it's looked since high school too yeah. i think you yeah know? i think it looks better than high it's school. it's fun fucking doing this dude and just know. knowing the the fact that like we, you know the way this these senior leagues work and shit like it, you can play this shit until you're 50 or 60 dude, if you, you want know what to. we should you know what we should do we what? should fucking film a game we should film a game from from like like the real like out outfield uh, perspective of like a real baseball game and then voice over it. Yeah, I remember talking about you know this once, saying? dude. That yeah. would be fucking sick if we did that. Especially, I think it would be super funny if we did like. I think people out there might enjoy it if we made like a condensed version of it or something. Yeah, with just like some funny highlights and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, not every inning just like but i think like we could do a whole fucking game and just say funny shit and just clown on our teammates and shit and i think the the guys that actually play on the team and know everybody i think that shit would be they would find it funnier than anybody else that'd be hilarious i, I think be, we should I do would that love just clowning myself yeah myself out just there. do like a three inning game how do i get hit so much dude i don't I'm know literally i probably one of the uh, one of the smallest targets, not height wise, but fucking weight wise. It's you, usually uh, the big dudes that get beaned all the time, you know? You crowd the plate? I, not really. Hmm. I don't think so. It doesn't feel like it. It's weird. I don't know. You do get hit. The last like, three years, I led the team and hit by pitch. You get hit a lot. I don't know why. Every day. Every, I don't move, though. I think that's what it was. Every game, you get hit, bro. They got pissed at me at the, on the second one, the last game. Because, the dude, it's like if you throw it at my ass, or like at you know at my shoulder right. you know not in like a ske- you know if it's not in a sketchy spot I'm not gonna make that big of an effort to get out of the way no especially like if you're not throwing heat right I always say like throw strikes or throw throw harder yeah you know when yeah, people I, complain I just always say what if it's a curve you know what if, I'm standing in there waiting for yeah, it to curve man exactly you know exactly I'm like and you, then if it doesn't curve it's like I'm what? supposed to bail out the second I see a pitch coming inside on me no no no. That's your real estate, you know? It's coming out of my head. I'm going to bail out. Yeah. Especially if the dude's throwing gas. But these people, for the most part, are not throwing no. to the point where I'm really worried about it. Me you either. Know? No. And most of them are throwing like 60, 55, 60, 65, you know? Yeah. Somewhere in there. I'm having fun this year, though. I, if we don't win the ship this year, though, I'm going to tell you right now, we should start our own team. Yeah, the, the Turp squad, the, the grapes, yeah, the grape, get grape some, gang. Get some sick ass custom purple unis. Grape gang, dude. Ooh, the grape gang. That'd, That'd be, be sick. sick. That'd be pretty tight. That'd be sick. <clears throat> have the double ha- G's on the hats. We'll have an open draft. Have everybody come out. Yeah. Get all the viewers to come out. Mm-hmm. All the locals. That'd be hella fun. But uh, I don't know. Is, is, is that possible? Would be epic. Is that yeah. Pop- yeah. If you get enough guys together, you can make your own team. Yeah. Oh, that's All you got to do is pay the, the the league fees, like the total amount for the even team. It, even so if it makes like an odd amount. Yeah. However many players, you have to have enough players to like feel the team. I'm sure you probably have to have minimum like 12. But the more players you have, the less everybody's fee is because it's yeah. divvied up mm-hmm. and everything. Cool. But yeah. Baseball talk. So yeah, speaking of fun, I just got back from Hawaii about five days ago now, actually. So I guess I didn't just get back. But. Talk about a fucking experience, man. Like, that shit was so dope. You've been there, right? A few times. I went a bunch of times when I was a kid. Uh-huh. The last time I went was, like, right when I graduated high school. Yeah, I mean, 18. I went out there alone, so it was kind of weird. I never traveled alone, but something was just telling me to go, and I cashed in my credit card rewards points <laughs> and just fucking went. 
And as soon as I landed, it was like, oh, man, what a paradise, you know? It's, like, warm, and it's just tropical and beautiful, and the beach and the water so clear, and it was just amazing, man. Like, what was what was your favorite part of it? The luau. The they luau? called me Luau Dang in Hawaii, dog. <laughs> luau Dang. <laughs> I did do the luau on Thursday. That was a pretty cool little, like, traditional local thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lots of little honeys there. But um, I also filmed a music video there for one of the, these songs I wrote probably about four months ago now and recorded. I'm um, just getting it to video form now and... Honestly, the video is coming out so sick, man. I, Getaway? Yeah, it's called Getaway. Um, I forgot about that song until you started doing that. Yeah, I mean, the concept is pretty real, even probably more than ever right now. Um, it's crazy how time flies, though. Yeah, it's like that. that's a, a song I feel like I just fucking recorded it and got it mastered and all that, and then it's like, wow, that was like three months ago already. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. You know, but... Anyways, it's a song that's, you know, pretty close to me. Close, you know, it came from my heart. And, uh, you know, I think, I think it's... <laughs> Aww. Yeah, but I think it tells a pretty sick story. Passionate and, uh, boy. Passionate. You're a passionate <laughs> boy. That's passionate oh, I've been boy. passionate boy. But anyways, it, it tells a sick story, in my opinion. So be on the lookout for that. Anyways, I was Good shit. Say, when does that drop? June... That drops June 21st, guys, on all streaming platforms and... The video on YouTube, it's going to go on my channel. Then I'll probably drop the audio on the CCC maybe or something like that. So just be on the lookout for it. Don't want to bore you guys with it too much. So I think we should move on into news. Hit me with some news. All right. I mean, uh, have you? did you ever think a vacuum company would make a car? Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, Dyson is coming out. They're saying they got plans for three new electric cars, three separate models. Damn. Let's actually pull this up here. I don't know if they have pictures of it, but look, yeah, right here. Three Dyson electric cars on the drawing board. Three new electric cars plan to release. $2.7 billion move to get into the auto industry. Hired 500 people. Oh They're my building God. a plant in Singapore. That's huh. insane. I wonder when that's supposed to like all be rolled out. Stick to fucking vacuums, Yo, man. there's going to be Dysons on the road? Put me in a Dyson, dude. Let's get a sponsor. Yo, you know what would be fucking sick what you know if dyson gets into making cars you know what i want i want like a roomba that goes down the street i want, <laughs> I, I want that car to be fucking just be working like a vacuum like a street time. sweeper yeah and when you get home you have like you know just a fucking filter in the back just like the vacuum you take it out and it's just like picking up like stray fucking chip bags and like fucking cigarette butts oh. and all kinds of shit floating around clean you know? green yeah and then you get the fat tax rebate for driving that thing you weigh you weigh how much trash you pick up and or, then tax refund yeah and that, or when they get these automatic cars which we mm. all know are coming you know these self-driving cars where there's just gonna be no one in it and you hop in it like a fucking taxi or a uber or whatever you yeah. know uh -huh. those things should have them in there yeah. Dyson needs to get in on that. Or somebody else. If Dyson's getting in, then I'm sure one of these other vacuum cleaners is trying to fucking get in there too, dude. I don't know. I would I I think it's gonna be a complete fail. I think they should probably just stick to vacuums. I bet you the vacuum industry's cutthroat both. <laughs> vacuums just seem kinda like some mob shit right? for some reason, what you the know. Fuck, man. <laughs> like Dyson, like who's Dyson? Dyson's like some fucking old guy who's like somehow lived to be 102 and he's yeah. like now he's got his fucking son running the shit. Hey, fuck Dyson. I got a shark, yo. They shark? got Shark? Who else is there, bro? Who shark? Else? Shark came up in the game, bro. Who are the OG vacuum cleaner companies? I don't dude? know, but Shark's the new guy on the block. Br br bristle? Bissell? Bristol, maybe, yeah. Something like that. Dyson's the king, though. And then out of nowhere, just Shark came and fucking took hella market share. Dyson's kick-ass, man. Shark is pretty kick-ass, I ain't gonna too. lie. Those Dyson's are expensive, but my girl had to have it. Oh, God. You know? Well, the it's one with one the, of the, the ball? The one, one with the ball? No, I forget exactly which one we got, but they're pretty expensive, you know? But they're fucking worth it, dude. Especially if you have, like, animals and you got a bunch of, like, dog hair and yeah. shit like that. Yep. You know, yeah, a good vacuum is definitely a necessity, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> yeah, vacuum talk here on uh, the Real Ones <laughs> podcast. Anyway, go with that, the Dyson. That is pretty fucking nuts. That Dyson is making a car. I want to see what they look like. I they, think they released some pictures of these concepts, right? Does no, it show them? It on just here? shows a fucking Tesla, man. It's huh. like, come on, get original with it. Look at they just show a fucking. They show that guy. Look at that gangster. 
<laughs> James Dyson. James Dyson. That's the guy right there. James That's Dyson. The man himself. Inventor of I can't read that with my cyclonic cyclonic vacuum technology. Damn. He invented cyclonic vacuum technology, guys. That guy looks smart, dude. Get a fucking Dyson. Isn't it crazy how like men as they age, like their body like they get like an inch shorter, but their ears and nose just keep growing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm not looking forward to that shit, no, dude. No, me either. Hopefully, yeah, that sucks. Our Is ears, it weird when you get... Our ears are going to be all gumbo, <laughs> dumbo. It's, it's getting kind of weird, too, as we get older, how you can, like, see ourselves in our, like, parents and grandparents more and, like, see, like, uh Like, off. Oh, uh, I'm going to look pretty much like that. Yeah. And then... Well, look pretty much like that. Yeah. You know? When you're a kid, you're like, oh, I look different than them. I look, you know. You're like, oh, I'm and morphing. you get older and you're like, oh. Uh, I see I'm how. I'm looking more and more like my dad. You're looking more and more like your dad. Yeah. You know. I see how it works now. You get old. <laughs> you put up that picture of you and you and the bullet the other day. The bullet. IG, huh? Yeah. And uh, I think. I could see it in that picture. I'm like, damn. I'm turning He looks into just my- like his dad <laughs> yeah, now. I'm turning into the bullet. <laughs> what, what bullet am I going to be? Dude, so we got the silver bullet, we got the crimson bullet. The golden bullet? The golden bullet. Am I the golden bullet? Uh, you're the pewter bullet. Pewter? Yeah, pewter. What the fuck is it's that? A, it's a metal. It's a pea shooter. Trust me. No, pewter. <laughs> or you can be a... Uh, shit, what else? Sounds like a computer. It's your boy Shane O'Macintosh over here on the Shane O'Macintosh. I don't know what I'm talking about, dude. I'm much more lit than usual on I'm this podcast. I'm so good. high, man. This joint is just <clears throat> roasting my ass. But we should probably move along in the news here. Uh, did you see that fucking upset in boxing? Yeah, oh. dude. The Anthony Joshua fight. Got yeah. knocked out by Butterbean. Butterbean with the KO, man. But, hey, I'll tell you what. It's all. Sometimes it's all about how durable you are. You feel me? Like... If your punches ain't doing nothing to the guy, then what is the point? Andy Ruiz Jr., man. Yeah, you know? But when you think about durability, you like think about stamina, and you see somebody like that that's like so ripped and athletic and in such good like conditioning and shape, and then you see somebody that I'm to talking, the untrained I'm, eye looks like they, ju- they work security somewhere and just eat donuts all day, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But imagine punching that, dude. You got like a, a protective layer of body armor yeah. on almost, you know? And he can just take hits for days until the right time. Until He, he got a chin, yeah. He's, you're just tagging him, tagging. You're getting tired because you're just like hitting him with all you got and it's not even phasing him, right? So then it's the moment you get tired, he fucking, from what I saw, just... Lowered his guard for a second. Bam! There's still skill and technicality and all that shit involved. But yeah, it, a major upset. The funniest. I, I don't really know shit about know. boxing yeah. <laughs> um, or fighting in general, but I do enjoy watching it as yeah. a spectator. But um, I the best part about this for me has been all the fucking memes and all this shit on social right? media. You like, know? Uh, There's been some funny ones, dude. People were going ham for a couple of days after that shit. Right? They're like, fuck that. I ain't, I ain't worrying about a six-pack, <laughs> right, or some shit. Yeah, it's all the, the it's a big dude movement, you know? Right. But I, I, that was definitely, you know, cool to see, if yeah. nothing else. Um, I think that's the first Mexican heavyweight champ of all time, right? He took all the belts, he too, took right? three belts that night. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, shout out, man. That was that was pretty impressive. I always love to see an upset. That, They're right? supposed to have a rematch at the end of the year, too. Really? Yeah, uh, at the end of the year, yeah, I think November or December. Wow. That's what I think they're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know shit about boxing, but I do know that he got knocked the fuck out. We'll see what <laughs> we'll see what happens, you know what I'm saying? Like, will it be uh I think the next fight will definitely show if it was like a fluke or if it was for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially with a, like a good amount of time to like train and prepare for that, you yeah. know, if it really is at the end of the year and shit. So yeah. there should be no excuses by then, you know. No. Nah. Really be able to see who's the better man, but Yeah. Definitely interesting. Yes, sir. This one's a little bit fucked up. I saw that homelessness is up 12% this year in L.A. County. So uh, this comes after, like, really big spending that they've been doing um, the last couple of years, you know, increasing funds on supporting new housing and Mm -hmm. all that type of shit. Officials are blaming are blaming rising rents and evictions. Yeah, I mean, of course. We're seeing it in the Bay, too, man. It's not, like... It's nothing fucking new. We know that rent, my rent's going up like a hundred bucks a year. That's why I wanted to talk about it. It's just yeah. like, I feel like there's a big 
percentage of people that like have watched our YouTube videos over time. And like we meet people from all over the world and we go to these events and stuff. And pe- like Callie has always had this reputation like as just being pretty much the, uh, essentially like the the greatest spot on earth that you can live for for some people and what they want. Like if, there's the yeah. Hollywood thing. There's like the West Coast beach thing. There's like the NorCal Redwood thing. Like whatever yeah. your flavor is, like there's a good... You know, they they have what you want but here. You know, they got expensive. ski towns and it's everything. It's expensive, bro. Yeah, but I, I, that's what I'm getting to. Do you think, I mean, it's not, compared to other places, is it worth it at this point for what you, for what you really get? You know what I mean? I mean, if you got it like that, it's worth it, you know? Yeah, I just think, like, so many people out here are, like, struggling just to get by. You go to other parts of the country, like, you go to the Midwest and just, like, you know, a lot of other, you know, most of the other parts in the country, it's still a lot of, like, single-family homes and, yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. And here it's just, like, apartments, everybody crammed on top of each other. A lot of people you know, even into their, you know, 20s, late 30s are you know Struggling. have roommates or they have like multi you see a lot of like multiple generations of like mm-hmm. people's family living together like that's increasing people are becoming more and more condensed and packed in and yeah. like you always thought that that's <laughs> something that would happen like it makes sense but i feel like living in the bay for the last few years you really start to feel it especially for us living here our whole yeah. lives leaving for a period of time three four years and then coming back Dude. and just feeling the difference you know I mean, for the average person, it's definitely not the place to live, man. It's like, you know, you're going to pay at least three grand to live, like, in a Bay Area city. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. The apartment that me and Toph lived in, uh, in Oakland, like, you know, right Lake Merritt, right there. Like, good, pretty good part of the town. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's nice parts of Oakland and there's kind of sketchy parts of Oakland like this is what this was a great spot to be for for people like us you know I'm saying Mm -hmm. especially for some young kids like us and we paid I think 1350 for that spot for like a nice you know pretty nice two bedroom there yeah and now it's like 3500 probably yeah it's more it's way more than double now you know for the same spot and like Oakland has become like you know pretty nice you know and like really expensive and like San Francisco is insane, you know, especially insane. for like what you get and for the yeah. ball. It's like a certain flavor that people just really have to love to want to live there. And now it's like even pricing and like surrounding areas, especially here in the Silicon Valley, like in the right. tech industry, like there's a lot of money here and there's a lot of like expensive homes. But just living here in general has gotten really expensive. <sighs> Obviously, there's parts of Southern California, same situation. I just and, and people always ask, you know. Where do they got better weed? California, Colorado. Yo, I'm thinking of moving to California, and I almost want to tell people, like, you really got to think about your priorities to come out here because it, it right. is really, really expensive. So you know? expensive. You're going to spend three quarters of your paycheck at least on rent. You know what I'm saying? It's for a crazy. lot of people, yeah, it's for crazy. the average person. Yeah, you know? for the average person, unless you're balling, unless you're balling like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can expect to see homeless rates go up every year, I can promise you that, with inflation and, you know, Less jobs because of uh, AI or whatever you guys think you call it AI, yeah. Art- artificial intelligence, yeah. and uh, technology increasing and less jobs, and it's just gonna fucking it's gonna go up, you know. And it's sad. It's it's sad, but that's what I predict. And fuck, I mean, you're seeing more homeless right here in the Bay too. They're everywhere. Everywhere, now, man. man. Everywhere. Dude. Under every single overpass, there's just like the biggest collection of shopping carts and, and tents and stuff. And like they pop up super quick, especially around here and shit, I've noticed. Yeah. But which makes me think like they do, you know, have to pick up and move every now and then. And they definitely do, you know, come in and like make them move from these spots. But like they set right. up camp and they're there for a few months and it's just like. I mean, I get it, you know. Like, I don't want these people living out in Colorado and, like, freezing to death at night. I remember when we lived out there, we would, you know, routinely, after these big storms, you would, like, turn on the news the next day and hear that, like, eight people froze to death. Yeah, eight homeless found dead. Yeah, it's like, oh, my God. It's crazy. Uh, It's very sad. And, you know, especially in California, you're going to see it rise with, you know, like like Shane said, the, the nice weather. You know, it's a great place for homeless people. I was thinking the same thing in Hawaii. And, like, you saw, every night I saw at least, like, three bums from my balcony just sleeping on the beach. Hmm. 
And I saw uh, I saw this story the other day that said like I forget which state it was, but like California and somebody else like there there was a program where they were offering the homeless like free uh, bus tickets to like go to certain places. I don't know necessarily. I can't remember if like they got to pick between a certain like selected locations or if it was just like hey, we're offering you guys all a trip here. Mm -hmm. But it made me start thinking, like, what if they did that? What if it was like, hey, uh, California has a homeless problem. I, we realize that a lot of you guys are stuck in a cycle out here. It's really, you know, it's really expensive to live. Right. You, maybe you just want a fresh start. You need to, just to go to a, cha you know, change of scenery. Right. You know, get a new, like, fresh start on life. And you offer somebody, like, a bus ticket out, which basically is what they were doing. Right. What if they're sending them all to, like, the same place? What if they're like, all right, we're going to send you guys all to, like, Omaha, Nebraska. Right. And then what if Omaha, Nebraska is like, fuck that shit, man. Don't just be sending us all your homeless people, you know? Like, what now our economy has to, like, take on, you know, supporting that and all that shit. Mm -hmm. And then what if they get in, like, these wars? Like, they're just, <laughs> instead of sending, like, instead of, like, shooting and sending bombs, they're just sending, like, greyhounds <laughs> full of fucking homeless people to, like, different cities. Like, uh, Oakland gets it and started, like, what if San Francisco decides to get rid of its, because San Francisco, we talk about homeless here. I can oh, go man. to San Francisco. It's, it's like, an so entirely bad. different world. It's you know? so bad. You're walking down the street next to a place that costs $6,000 a month to live in a two-bedroom apartment, and there's a guy shitting right in, right in front of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like that's the reality oh of San god. Francisco. You remember that chick that came up on our car? Oh my god, that was some crazy shit. I forgot about that. Yeah, San Francisco's got some lively bums. Let me tell we you. We went up there to to get our medical cards. I think, Fuck. or wasn't it to like renew or something? Like a few years back, um, and some chick ran up to us as we were getting in the car and opened up her shirt and like got on top of the oh, car man. and was like I'm Janet Jackson give me a dollar give me, give me a dollar uh -huh. I'll show you my titties like and you're like they're already out they're already we can out. see them they're already out she, you're, you were driving I remember you're like do I put it in reverse I'm like nah no. don't do it when she's on top of the car you're yelling at her like I'm trying to leave and she's <laughs> yeah. just fucking sitting on top of the car half Crazy. naked screaming incoherent shit at us so that's like par for the course yeah for an average day in san francisco mm -hmm. and it's one of the most expensive places in the world to live so like i said it's it's a particular type of flavor you it's know an oxymoron right or something like that yeah <laughs> i just think i don't even know like what my main point with this is I, it, it's just like i feel like a lot of times people get a certain perception of california and it may be like it may be close to reality or it may be way off or it might just be like exaggerated. Right. But, you know, the reality of like living in California for a lot of people and what they might want out of life or what they might be like used to or comfortable with might be different than they think going in. You know? Yeah. I mean, California's fucked up. Let's be real. All the morals here and all the values are so fucked up, you know. And then it's like... Well, you got the Hollywood thing. That's where I feel like all that I mean, dark and, shit stems from. And the Bay Area. It's just, it's the, kind of the same here with all the tech money. And, you know, it's, there's, you know, wherever there's a ton of money, there's a ton of greed. And, you know, it's just a fucked up way of... Yeah, there's different types of creepy shit going on in both spots. Yeah. That's a good point. For sure, but... Anyways, homeless is up 12% in L.A., unfortunately, as we circle back to that. And, uh, you know, speaking of money, Jay-Z becomes the first, or not the first. <laughs> Cha-ching. Wait, is, is he the first? Yes, Jay-Z officially becomes the first billionaire rapper of all time. People were saying that Dr. Dre... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But Forbes had him at $900 million for 2019. 900? So, 900 million. So that was all just false? That's because as soon as I mean, I, they don't know exact numbers. You know, I, it, it I, depends how you count it. You know, I read it right here, and then I back, I was like, wait a second. I thought Dre was the first billion I, with, with Beats going to Apple, right? I do remember after that sale because I think he made like five hundred million on that or something like that. I remember hearing that he was going to be or had become the first rapper billionaire or whatever. So <laughs> but I don't. Th but th but. Forbes, which is whatever the main thing everybody goes by, right? right. Has him at nine hundred million. So you know, depending on how they look at assets and shit, you know, they're going to count that differently depending right. on who's talking about it. Dre's probably going to say that he's worth one point two. You know, 
Okay. If he liquidated everything. But regardless, I don't even really look at Dr. Dre as a rapper, really. I look at Jay-Z way more as a rapper than Dr. Dre, you know. Huh. Well, uh, sorry. Yeah, I yeah, I guess Jay-Z officially is the first rapper billionaire then. It's just kind of crazy. I, I just wanted to talk about it because it got me thinking about... Uh, like athletes, right? Mm-hmm. Because you see like all these, especially right now, all these athletes are starting like their own entertainment companies and shit. Right. And they're getting like uh, Steph Curry. I saw a commercial the other night. He's doing like this new like mini golf like putting show. And it's like executive produced by Steph and Curry. I saw that know? too. I saw that. It looked kind of corny, but yeah, um, for sure. I don't know. And then like KD's doing his shit. And then like LeBron is doing his shit. They're all like trying to get into like entertainment and production and all that stuff. And, you know, obviously, it's other, the, I'm sure there's a creative aspect to it, but a lot of it is, like, I feel like these guys, they're competitive on and off the court, and I feel like their off-the-court competitive thing translates into trying to be, like, successful in business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And trying to, like, get their net worth up. And that's why, that's why I feel like we look at it a lot of times with these contracts, and we're like, why don't you take a little bit less so you guys can, like, have a better team? Why does it matter? Like, you make so much in these, like, off – you know, off the court endorsements mm-hmm. and these sneaker deals and these commercials. Why your contract doesn't even necessarily? It's not even that big of a chunk for a lot of these like mega superstars. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's like, why does it matter if you make thirty million or twenty six million right. when you could sign a couple more like really good you know dudes that will come in there pretty cheap and play off the bench? Like you can make more move. You know, you yeah. can build a better team. You always look at it that way as a fan, but I feel like it's not even necessarily about the money in their pocket. I mean, for a lot of them it is, but I feel like it's more the respect that goes with being paid what you're worth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it got me thinking like, like Michael Jordan net worth 1.9 billion, LeBron James, 440 million. Mm -hmm. People have talked about LeBron James might be the, the first like athlete billionaire, but I feel like they look at Michael Jordan as like, that's, uh, Michael Jordan's looked at differently, I feel like, you know, because Why? of the sneaker thing, like that became something totally different than Jordan. You know, like he doesn't really have anything to do with Jordan sneakers, Jordan brand. His he name's has, on it. What do you mean? Yeah, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't, hasn't d- done design. He has no like say in designing shoes. So he doesn't what? do anything. It has his name on it. He I'm was not the saying best, he's, he's the best basketball player of all time and therefore he has the best shoe. He is, but I'm just saying a lot of these guys now are like diversifying the way that they're making money and doing it in a way that's more like entrepreneurial. There's not really anything entrepreneurial about being the greatest basketball player of all time. So of course they're going to put more money and advertisement and just promo and marketing into building a product based around you. He didn't really have to do anything okay, well, other than being the greatest basketball player ever did, for Jordan sneakers <laughs> to be the most successful basketball shoe of all time. Why didn't the LeBron shoe work then? Because he's not. Because LeBron isn't Michael Jordan. Okay. That's all I'm and, saying. You know? But I'm talking about from a business perspective. I'm talking about this off the court thing. That's yeah. why I think. Uh, that's why I think. Look, all I'm saying is. Michael Jordan's looked at a little bit differently off the court as far as like the things he's doing. Like, go back to the entertainment thing. Like, 50 Cent, he had like the vitamin water thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, like, uh, what Jay Z had uh, I mean, I the, the see, title thing. I don't think you, you know? could really say that's more entrepreneurial, though. Like, uh, Jordan bought the Hornets, right? Yeah, and he hasn't made any money doing that, and he hasn't won. He's been a terrible. What do you mean owner. he hasn't made money? You don't think he's made money owning an NBA franchise? Mm, I mean, maybe. Okay, so he's made a little bit of money doing that. That's cool, but again, it's not a real creative, outside the box way to do something. What has you know LeBron what done that's outside the box creative? I mean, LeBron's like done his media company. I'm. I'm not even saying that LeBron has done it better. <laughs> I'm just saying like. It's going to be interesting to see because a lot of these guys are getting into a lot of other different things that do take a lot more of a creative mind to actually execute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, Michael Jordan, he is the greatest of all time. So if you make a product around Michael Jordan, his greatness is going to sell it. The reason that he is the that rich off those sneakers is because he's 6-0 in the finals. Well, yeah, he also he brought it home. He you know? also didn't, you know, play when there was social media and shit. You know how much money he would have been making off like social media ads and promo and shit. Mm-hmm. Like he he played in a different time, you know. So he, it's hard to compare, kind of. But I think 
Michael George is just as entrepreneurial as any other athlete. Imagine the money he'd have. He's though, got his he hands. Didn't... If you have one, po- if you're worth one point nine billion, your hands are in so much business. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't honestly know like what else he's involved in. All I know is lot. all I know is he's blown a lot of money and potential on gambling. For sure. As far as you he's look got at some him, issues. You look at him as like a role model. Like LeBron James is, is a better role model. Yeah. It's kind of remarkable if you look at what LeBron James has been able to do, like coming in that hyped from that young. Because yeah. Michael Jordan wasn't hyped like that. No, he you wasn't. You know what I'm saying? He mm. didn't have that growing up. Mm-mm. Like, like yeah, he had to fight his way to the top. LeBron you know? had to deal with a weird different he life. started here yeah like, for since it's from the time he was a kid mm-hmm. you know so that's having to live up to those expectations and having that pressure all your career it's tough you know that is tough michael jordan had a different kind of pressure i'm not saying one is different or better than the other you know yeah but i yeah. think honestly i think one drives you more though i mean you can see what you know how michael jordan turned out he was always the underdog and that made him have that fucking fight that no one else had whereas lebron started with the keys you know in his hand Mm -hmm. and it's like he he definitely fulfilled expectations i think but he didn't succeed them or you know what i mean yeah that's what i I do think he but even sometimes you look at lebron throughout his career like in the finals when he was the favorite or when he was the underdog i think he's performed better when he was the underdog too with the added pressure he just didn't have a good enough team around him, to right. be honest, to beat the Warriors. But every time LeBron pra- played the Warriors in the finals, he was yeah. the best player. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, for sure. With the except, like KD, it, with the last couple years, you, there's an argument to be made there. Obviously, but KD's pretty. He's a baller. If I'm being honest, which both players in their prime, you know, I'm taking LeBron. What do you mean between who? Over LeBron and KD. Mm, yeah, me too. In in their primes, I'm taking LeBron for sure in his prime over KD. But, you know, you guys could really use KD right now. <laughs> I don't know. Who you think the you know, I don't know. You guys got your backs against the wall, I think. Yeah, I'm feeling the feeling the pressure. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I would definitely like to have him back. Before this shit is over. <coughs> Whoa. <coughs> It's getting funky in here. It's getting real funky. We're coming at you with a little DFB. Oh, defend the bars. A little defend the bars. Today's defend the bars are coming to you courtesy of Little Wayne. <laughs> Hit From me. the song, Dr. Carter. Okay. Um, Where is it? I lost it. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. Swagger tighter than a yeast infection. Mm. Fly. Go hard like geese erection. <laughs> <laughs> what? Say it again. Swagger tighter than a yeast infection. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What? How is, what? Is a yeast infection tight? You tell me. I'm defending it? Uh, I will say, okay, I could come up with some better words I'm, to describe a yeast infection I'm phoning than tight. A, I'm phoning a friend. Or, no, or I'm thinking I could come up with a, a better way to explain tight vagina hey. i'm tight <laughs> swagger tighter than a yeast infection fly go hard like geese erection i'm so confused man i'm a, i get the geese erection part i kind of like that one actually. i don't think but here's the thing a goose does not have a dick it doesn't no why not they fucking don't they just like Rub against them and fucking boom. How do you think animals do that when they rub against each but other? But they just lay eggs, though. Let's find it. <clears throat> let's let's ask Google. Google knows for us. Ask do, does do does ducks a, have dicks? No, not ducks. Does a goose geese. have a dick? Does a goose have a dick? Does a hold on, guys. Sorry. Do geese have dick? That's one of those weird, like plural. Does a weird goose ones. have a dick? Oh, most birds don't. There are almost ten thousand species of birds, that, and only around three percent of them have a dick. These <laughs> include ducks, geese, uh, and swans. They don't so have dicks. Ge- no, geese do have what? dicks. Right? They do. Chickens have dicks. But barely, they're tiny nubs that are no good for penetrating anything. This thing says, "All right, we got a uh, joke. You know, we more info than we needed on we that." We phoned but, a friend. Yeah, um, friend was Google. So, okay, uh, you know, swagger tighter than a yeast infection. I, 
uh, you know, there's nothing tight about a yeast infection. From what I know, they they kind of stink and they they hurt, right? There's a smell associated with. I don't think there's any type of uh, tightness associated with the yeast infection. So yeah, I, I would I would deem that bar right there undefendable. Undefendable. Indefensible. Undefendable bar. That's what that, that is. That is a ruling. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't defend that, guys. So, um, But unredeemable? I don't know if I would say unredeemable. I'd say you can redeem yourself from that one if you follow that up with a heater. Or you can just maybe not redeem it, but somehow move past it throughout yeah. the listening experience. Right. And I think he comes back pretty strong with the whole geese erection thing. So Yeah. I did not know that a goose has a dick, and therefore he can get erections. So good job, Lil Wayne. You brought it home. And that's DFB for the week on that ass. And with that being said, we're going to move into the viewer call. Oh, we're going to hit the hotline? Yeah, the we're going hotline. to hit, we're hit 1-800-GRAPE-HOTLINE. We only had one. Notice I said call. We got one. So let's see. I think man, it's... you guys suck. <laughs> wah, wah. Hi, this is your boy, Glenn, from Ann Arbor. Oh, uh, your accent My sucks question. too, dude. What is time? It's unfortunate. Is time a dimension? Ooh, is time like a fourth dimension? Does time move at the same rate all the time? Whoa. Wow, so um, accent I'm giving a 3 out of 10. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> but question I'm going to give like a 9.5 out of 10. That's a great question. Is what is time? Fuck. Uh, man, I don't know. Time is a clock. Is time like... Time's just a clock. Is time like linear everywhere? Is time like a, a plane? Does time have like a physical aspect to it? I think Cause, time is linear. Because the weird shit... That sounded good. The weird shit... <laughs> the weird <laughs> shit is, right? Like, if you if you stay here, right? Yeah. And I go travel to some solar system far away in a spaceship and I'm going at the speed of light all the way there for like 30 years and yeah. 30 years all the way back and I come back when we're like old men when, when I'm like I'm traveling out there at the speed of light there and back for 70 years on top of this so I'm 98 this is all theory and I come this back is all theory and, right? I come back and you're supposed to be 98 too right yeah according to my dipshit brain mm-hmm I'm pretty sure you would be a little older, or you would have aged more over that 60, 70 years than I would have because we were traveling at different speeds through the universe. That's theory, right? That's all theory. I don't know. That does not fucking make sense to me at all. Like, when I see movies and shit where, like, the, they stay... Like Interstellar. Yeah, they stay in the spaceship, and he goes down for, like, what, five minutes and comes back an old man or some shit? There, yeah, there's a couple where shit like that kind of happens. What the fuck, man? Interstellar's the best one. Interstellar's a heater. You've yeah. seen that, right? Yes, I have. That's the movie I'm talking Matthew about. Matthew McConaughey? I don't understand it, though. I, uh, you know, time travel is something. Like, I know that if you fly to Europe, you're time traveling because... You travel into the next day. <laughs> That's kind of weird, though, too, right? Yeah. Even time on this planet is different depending on where you are. Yeah. It's weird when you're like, you start off the morning, you get up early, you go somewhere early in the morning, you take a long flight, and you're going the, the right direction, and you're kind of like going back in time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're rotating, how does that work? You gotta you gotta be flying in that airplane in the opposite direction. The Earth is rotating faster. You I can't just, fly faster than the Earth. I is don't rotating. get it. It's Can like you? here's the Earth going around. Yeah, maybe it's not. Say good. you leave at the speed of light and you're going do 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 like. And you get there, I guess. All right, and there's like, and you come back. <laughs> Seems like the same amount of fucking time passed. You know. Yeah, that's a mind bender, man. I don't understand it. I'm, that's why I'm not a physicist or See, a scientist. That's, that's, people always ask, like, what, you know, not always, but we've frequently got the question, like, who would be your dream guest to have on here? I would love to have someone who's, like, an astrophysicist yeah. or 
somebody who's like fucking just science like, guru that can explain all this shit please, and break it down in layman's terms for me. Please explain time to me. Because we could sit here and just ask them all these mind benders all day. Yeah. All these crazy questions that I think of, you know? I don't understand it. I don't get it, man. I don't get how if you travel at the speed of light away from Earth and then come back at the speed of light and land, how different amounts of time have passed. I don't get it. I feel like time is a constant. One, two, three, four. That's a constant, right? It's like no matter where, like, whether you're traveling at the speed of light, isn't a second still a fucking second? What if you're going faster than the speed of light? Can you go faster than the speed of light? I don't know. We're so, that, we're well, so stupid. Light is the fastest thing found in the galaxy, right? Or the I fucking don't know. universe. We're so dumb. <laughs> yeah, galaxies and universes and tigers and bears. I don't know. You guys chime in, you know? Yeah. Call into the show. Send us a uh, record a voicemail. Send it to the ccc420 at gmail.com. Let dot us com, know. Dot com, dot com. Let us know if uh, what time is, how it works. Yeah. These these don't even have to be questions. You guys can call in and educate us because if there's somebody out there listening that's you know, can break this <laughs> down for two idiots like us. Please do. I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, so would I. You got a idea for me? I'm so high. I'm so high too. Uh perfect time for ideas then, huh? Yeah. What is oh, it? Oh, here we go. I got another one for you. So we were talking about like, so you, uh, we were talking about athletes. That 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 that. I got caught mouth. <laughs> we were talking about athletes earlier and like you know financial success and shit. What about music careers? Which athlete has had the best music career of all time? Because a lot Ooh. of them have tried it. Some of them have been even more painful than ours. That's pretty know? good. That's a pretty good question. Honestly. Uh... Didn't Damian Lillard rap? I think he has He's still... D- dude, Damian Lillard's fire. He's good. He's fire. Uh, he kind of sounds like AP9 a little bit. Yeah, he does. Yeah, Roy me. Jones Jr. Can't be touched, can't be stopped, can't be shook. Yeah, that was probably... I remember... We, I used to bump that I one play that. pretty that heavy. Hard. And like, what was that, fucking, Roy Jones Jr.? Yeah, can't be touched. We used to play that one heavy in like... That was a football song, Seventh dude. grade, eighth grade, yeah. Whatever that age is, 12, 13 years old, that was a banger. What else? Remember Shaq and Kobe? They had their little, like, rap beef for a while. Yeah. It's my chip balls, man. Oh. I got this shit. Ow, ow, ow. This shit was hard, bro. Yeah. Where's the, where's the audio? Whoa. Oh, no, he's doing it. Maybe it was coming up right there after the drop. I thought he just started talking earlier. It's funny you go to a concert, rap concert, what they don't tell you is the crowd is filled with 75% white kids and there's always one line out of the hook that the volume level goes down like 75%. Yeah. (laughs) That's a hard ass song though, man. We used to play that before football games. That shit gets me pumped up. Yeah, that was a banger. Um, I, I would, I definitely enjoyed Shaq a lot more than Kobe and that duo. What's it, what's it called? Um, I... Shit, I can't think off the top of my head. Shaq had one album. Was it Diesel or something? Oh, no. This is just like a freestyle thing he did on stage. Oops. Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. Nah, but Shaq had one album that in early on. It went gold, right? Like 1993 went gold. It went gold. I don't know if that was his first or second, but... Shaq had some bangers back in the day. Hell yeah. Um, Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson had some. Remember that song, yeah. Jules? Mm-hmm. That was a banger. Yeah. <laughs> Allen Iverson had some. He had some flow. He had a couple. I don't know if he did a whole project. I remember he had a couple of songs. Yeah. Oh, this is the 40 bars version. It's like the freestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's not the one with the feet. I got the jewels in my life. Yeah. I'm the only one. That's the banger. I'm talking about. Yeah, whatever. That's I got a cool little freestyle though. This one right here. Yeah, I think so. You know. What's boogie time? Yeah, here you go. Yeah, it's boogie time. Uh, uh, 
Uh, it's boogie yeah, time. Yeah, this yeah. is funky. Yeah, yeah. It's like Will Smith. Yeah, kind yeah. Of. Hella has a Will yeah. Smith feel, right? That's why I like it. I be the show, make a room, shake it, shake it, it down. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody Come on. on. Yeah. This is fire. Let this ride. This is getting me pumped for to do a freestyle. Yeah. Uh. Come on. You made a party with me. Ready? This chick, this, this hook's fire. It's so well You need to find out. It doesn't even say who did this hook, but I'm going to find out this chick. Yeah. This is so yeah, This has that Miami Will Smith vibe. Jewels in my life. Not the only one. Come on. Yeah. Boogie time. I might have to steal that one, AI. I think I'm going to have to give it up to AI. Shouts or, out to Boogie time, bro. It's either AI or Roy Jones Jr. They're both one hit wonders, <laughs> but those are some fire jams. Is that all of them? I wrote down all the honorable mentions. Oh, what about the KD and LeBron song? Have you heard that? I have. They're, due to get, they're together on a song. Are they? I yeah, I think they made it together. Or either that or some inter somebody on the internet just like, you know, took the audio and spliced it together uh -huh. but they're I, if i remember correctly katie's verse was pretty dope i don't really remember how lebron's was but i remember <laughs> yeah this is it <laughs> let's watch this for a second See, this is what I mean. They're in the more creative type shit. Hard work, sacrifice, meditation. I meditate. That's that's KD rapping. Yeah. No performance or nothing. It's all B-roll shit. And now I'm growing up, I got a couple dollars on me Spent a semester in school, I ain't no scholar, homie Or who with me, who with me, can dudes with me Shoot with me, pacing on your like Jamal Tinsley oh, yeah, 80,000 views Twice before he get around, relaxing in the seats of He's alright, right? It's alright, it's pretty good He's got some flow He's, Yeah, he like the bars he can, he can ride the beat I like the writing And every hater all the same I'm feeling like the world is Skip Bayless And I'm LeBron James Look, now I got a body full of tattoos Everybody. Yeah, that's that's cool. I fuck with it. People always think these guys are such enemies because right? that's the way they hype it up in this fucking movie that is the NBA. But I know. They're, they're all kicking it and making songs together in the offseason yeah. and shit. They're all homies, I bro. I think they, they did that back in the day during the lockout. They're all here. making millions doing what they love to do. Like They're all homies. Trust so me. who's your favorite out of all those? I'm going Roy Jones Jr., bro. Yeah, that's just that was that song had an impact on me. I really did play that a lot in college before games and shit. Got me pumped. Yeah, that's probably the one I have maybe the most emotional connection to, or that AI one. I definitely was bumping that yeah. back in the day. Once I found out that like rap, a rap, once I found out about the Shaq one and found out that like a rapper had made it or a basketball player had made an album, then I started looking for all of them, and right. then I found like the AI shit. And yeah. Um, I don't know. If I was going to pick my favorite, I'd probably go Dame Lillard right now because that's some shit I ac fire. I'd actually listen to. He's fire. Yeah. I his like project it. was fire. Hell yeah. Oscar De La Hoya, honorable mention. He was actually nominated for a Grammy for a project that he did. I think it was like some... Hey, Shaq, Shaq, Shaq shit, shit went gold right. though. So shout out to Shaq too. He has a gold album. So... That's an achievement in itself. Yeah, that's the second one I'd want to listen to. If yeah. I, if I wanted Shaq's someone, just a funny guy, too. If I could pick some of these guys to like keep going with their music career and take it seriously, I want Dame Lillard and Shaq. Shaq Daddy. Even if they teamed up, that Ooh, could be that'd heat, be a dude. fire duo. Dame Lillard and Shaq rap duo, oh. bro. <laughs> I'm, I, we're, so we need I think to start, we're on to something. We need to start calling for that now, bro. Please. Yes, I'm putting in a call for that. Ding. That could be heat. I'm calling the fucking flight attendant for that one. But for right now, we got uh, the Shane O Macintosh and Downtown Danny Brown rap duo. Yeah, getting ready for a uh, freestyle here. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. What we got left? Grape Gang member of the week. Shout out to uh, Grape Face Mike. No, Grape Face J Mike Seven Ten. <laughs> I mean, when I'm scrolling through and I see a name as heavily influenced by the show as Grape Faced J Mike Seven Ten. Shout out to uh, Tof for the Grape Face. Kush face reference. Shout out to uh, Archive Seed Bank. Shout out to Fletch for the J Mike. 
And that's your great gang member of the week. Yep, hit us up on IG, dog. We'll send you a hoodie. Yeah, definitely. All right, you got a funky one? I got a funky one. Here we go. We're going to ride out to another funky freestyle, guys. Drop it like it's hot. Yeah. So no yeah. purple. No purple weed. No. Oh. No. You can't sing about it. No purple weed. You can't no. say the word purple. That's or talk be- about... The G word or the three letter G thing. None that's, of that, dude. That's gonna be kinda hard. But I be hitting balls out the yard. Only on Sundays. Yeah. Huh? If we, we smoke- had games on Monday, I, we would be doing it then. I don't really care who they got in the pen. Yeah. I'm gonna come through like I'm looking for the hint. Yeah, I'm going for the win. Yeah. And I never play pretend. Hit them flavors. Shout out no, to the we neighbors. never play pretend Cause we the real ones Number 28 Here we go again Got an 8 of the green And no it's not 28 perf. on my back No Shama Rain no. Yeah. And you know I'm going Flowing insane ho. Yeah, Like two hits of Kush to the brain yo and I never talk about that stuff that isn't light green If it, even if it, yeah, I can't even talk about it And my brain just has a fart when I think about it And I can't even do that, yeah, yeah That just got really bad, yeah I feel like I just jumped off a lily pad I'm so whoa, high whoa. that I cannot catch the beat And I feel like I just yeah. fell right off of my feet Hit yeah. flavors They call me Danny Flavors now I'm all 11 players now, oh yeah, and I gotta <laughs> take a bong rip, oh yeah, I gotta take a little sip, I'll take a rip and then a sip and then I'll maybe take a dip every now and then, cause I gotta get ripped now, yeah, yeah, he's all 11 players ripped now, whoa, gotta get ripped now, gotta get a rip, don't I gotta trip, get I be smoking on now. the crib, and I keep that shit, gotta yeah, get a rip now, Oh, and I'm smoking on that gas, it's unleaded And you know I never sweated a thing When I came in the game already with the ring on my thing Yeah, rings on my fingers, I'm a champion And you know I get it done Oh, Mac coming through with the fucking man bun And we do this shit for fun And you know it's going down And I'm smoking on the brown when I'm coming to your town Whoa I never actually smoke on the brown, it's always light green And that other color that we cannot mention I'm just trying to get the pension, I just want my fucking redemption And I'm going fucking hard, hit him, yo I'm out of breath, I'm about to hit my death Yeah, probably sound like I've been smoking meth You're yeah. going. You're But going I haven't, days, and I'm going fucking yeah. feeling tragic And I am don't like being stuck in traffic, and I'm spitting magic, go I be spitting automatic, and you know it's automatic, and you know it's problematic, oh yeah I'm flying in a pigeon now, I'm sitting on the kitchen sink now I just be making up rhymes in my own head oh, well, I like yeah. the pigeon line <laughs> Yeah, a pigeon doesn't fly, no, I be playing guitar I don't really know how to play, line. yeah, in the car flying I be rolling in the pigeon, rolling no, 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 pigeon. Oh, yeah Coming on the mound, yeah, and they call me Wild Thing, and I'm coming out the bullpen. Okay. All right, we need to get the fuck out of here. We need to go to in and Maybe out. one time we'll try we doing a country get. song. Maybe we'll try you a country might find song. Me on the back. Number road. 28, yeah. we're out. Keep playing that. Let's do a country one. You might find me smoking on a backwood. Backwood. Smoking on the backwood. We're smoking strong now. Okay, purple's allowed only when we're doing country. Okay. I'm smoking on the grapes and I'm riding on a horse. Yeah. Yeah. I just sold my Porsche and I'm chilling on the porch and I'm riding on a. Whoa. You already know I be riding on a horse, kid. And you know my voice is horse, kid. Cause I'm singing that. Yeah.
It tastes so good Rafting is going down as a purple it down. in a backwood In a backwood, yeah Roll it up tight Roll it up tight Me and you, oh yeah My poor oh, boy Oh, be my heaven tonight Show. I'm lit. Yeah, let's go get some in and out, huh? I'm fucking starving. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. All right, guys. Thanks for watching number 28, In the Gutter. Yeah, we out. I'm fucking lit. In the gutter, hide your mother. Get out of here, dude. Hey, you got some caramel in your beard. I'll keep you there for later. All right. Peace out. Bye, guys. Yeah!